To treating cancer, we've tried a lot of approaches. Chemicals, radiation, or just cutting the tumors out. But some tumors resist all of these treatments. So, how about using light? Not powerful laser light, but gentle pulses of light you can barely see. That's the approach taken by Dr. Jennifer West. She's an associate professor of bioengineering at Rice University in Texas. She's developed a technique that combines light and nanotechnology in a form of something she calls nanoshells. This combination has been successful in killing tumor cells in mice. If it works in humans, it could revolutionize the way we treat cancer. Dr. West, welcome to Quirks. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, what are your nanoshells? So nanoshells are nanoparticles, so they're materials that are billions of a meter in diameter, and they consist of a very small speck of glass coated with a very thin shell of gold. And based on how we design these particles, the size of the glass and the thickness of the gold, we can make them absorb light at different wavelengths and convert this light into heat. Oh. And so <laughs> they, they, they sound like microscopic little Christmas ornaments that you got here. Yeah, I think that's, that's a good analogy. You can also think of them as kind of malted milk balls, only billions of a meter in size and with glass and gold instead of malt and chocolate. <laughs> now, how do they interact with light? So, they absorb light and convert it to heat. And for biomedical applications, we're specifically interested in near-infrared light. This is light between 800 and 1,000 nanometers in wavelength. It's a little beyond the visible range of light. And it's interesting because near-infrared light can penetrate very deeply into tissue. And so that can allow us to basically probe and manipulate these nanoparticles that are inside of the body with light that we apply from outside. This light is totally harmless to the tissue. It's only when they hit the nanoparticles that the light is converted into heat that can very locally kill the cells that the nanoparticles are attached to. How much light do you actually need to do this? Very, very little. We're looking at light intensities less than you would have in a typical laser pointer. Wow. So you're using the same principle that makes the pavement hot in the summertime, just light shining on, on an object and, and it gets hot. Right. What was your idea of using the system to treat cancer? So we've had a couple of studies now. The first one just came out in the literature. And in that one, we wanted to understand the relationship between the nanoparticles in the tumor, how many we had, how much light we applied, the temperature we would get, and then the destruction of the tissue. So in those studies, we injected the nanoparticles directly into the tumors and then monitored the temperature profiles and the tissue damage. We saw we were able to kill the tumors with only a couple of minutes exposure to light and that the damage was very well localized just to the tumor site where we had treatment with the nanoshells. We've also more recently shown that we can attach nanoshells to antibodies that are designed to seek out and bind to tumors. And so we can have nanoshells attached to antibodies that we inject intravenously and allow them then to seek out the tumor and bind to it. And that's good because then we could potentially treat metastases that are too small to detect on MRI. So there are things you wouldn't be able to find to do a direct injection. Wow. So you're saying that you, you attach these things to the, to the body's, uh, part of the body's immune system and they just hunt out the tumors? Right. So antibodies are part of your immune system and these would be antibodies uh, that you would make specifically in a laboratory to use for this. But it's the same concept. Now, how do these nanoshells actually kill the tumor cells? The destruction of the tumor cells is due to the heating when they absorb the light. The nanoshells themselves are completely non-toxic and don't hurt the cells at all. This is great because that way, if you're injecting them intravenously, allowing them to circulate and find the tumor, if they pass through normal tissue, they won't cause any damage. Whereas if you're using something like a chemotherapeutic agent, it's toxic to all of the tissue it touches. That's why you have so many side effects with chemotherapy. So how, how effective was it? So far in our studies, this has been an extremely effective therapy. So uh, we've done studies now where we've seen complete regression of tumors with no regrowth even six months later. Holy smokes. 
Now, now what uh, what happens to these nano shells if, if all they're doing is getting hot? Do you, mm -hmm. uh, what happens to them? Over time, they're engulfed by macrophages, which are part of your immune system and will be coming in to uh, basically degrade and remove the dead tumor. They'll also be degrading and eating up the nano shells at the same time, and these then will accumulate in the spleen and the liver, and then be excreted through the feces. Oh, they, they, don't, they don't build up anywhere in the body? They don't seem to. We're doing some further studies to make sure that that's the case, but so far it looks like they are excreted over a period of several weeks. This sounds almost too good to be true, and I, I guess we should make this clear right here that all this work that you were doing is done on mice, not on humans. Right. So what would be the procedure then if I found that I had some tumor and uh, or some form of cancer and I, I was going to get this treatment, what would happen to me? I think that you'd go into a doctor's office and have an IV injection, then have a cup of coffee, wait around for about two hours, read a magazine, and then you would be exposed to near-infrared light. You'd be exposed to the light for somewhere between two and four minutes and then you'd be done, and you would go home. That's it? That would be it. And, and how long would it take for the, these nano shells to do their work destroying the cancer cell? You see all of the events that are necessary to kill the cancer cells within two to four minutes from when you start the light. Wow. Yeah. What was your reaction when you saw these results? I have to say, in the very beginning, I was astounded with the results. When you're working in scientific research, you always expect to run into a lot of failures before you have any successes, and this project has worked amazingly well just from the get-go. There's always this fear whenever anyone's had surgery or, or whatever procedure for cancer that they don't get it all, that there's always going to be something left that, and that it'll, it'll come back. How, how does this deal with that issue? Well, this would certainly be something that you could repeat several times. If there were any concerns about that, you could have this procedure done once, come back in a few weeks, do it again. Since it should have minimal to no side effects, that wouldn't be a real problem to have that procedure done multiple times. I also hope that long term, this would be a procedure you could actually do prophylactically. So if you knew that you were at risk for a certain type of cancer, you could potentially have a treatment with the nanoshell and an antibody that recognizes that tumor type and inject them, let them go see if there are any, any small tumors that have formed that are too small to see on MRI or CT scans yet, and try and destroy any of those very small tumors before they cause any problems. That's a very long-term hope, but I think that would really revolutionize how we deal with cancer. So how long do you think it will take before we see this in humans? We're hoping to start the first clinical trials in 12 to 18 months. Well, Dr. West, good